Hello, and welcome back to my book review channel. My name's Phoenix, and I'm so glad you're here with me today. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing one of my favorite books that I've ever read. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but this it, it was up here. Um, this this These are my favorite books in hardback. Um, I usually, sometimes if I bought it on Kindle, I'll make sure that I buy it and get it in hardback, and it goes on this shelf. So if you can see these books, they're there for a reason. Um, but when I had read the Thursday Murder Club, it kind of put me in, in, in the thought of this book. And so I, I wanted to reread it and see if it was as good as I had thought it was. Cause I kind you know, I remember the basic idea, but I didn't remember if it, I, I didn't know if it was going to move me again the same way. And it's definitely a different type of novel than the Thursday Murder Club. That one's a lot funnier in a lighthearted kind of way and this one is not it's so funny believe me there's laugh out loud moments but it is definitely a little a lot more dramatic so without further ado i'm going to be talking about a man called Ove by frederick bachman this book is a must read um it's set in sweden and it is about a man named Ove who is 59 years old and at the start of the book, he has been made redundant at his job. It seems to be the straw that broke the camel's back. He's just fed up with life. There doesn't really seem to be much purpose for him anymore. And so he is kind of looking for a way out. Um, but much to his dismay, he has some new disruptive neighbors who move in and everything kind of spirals out of control for him because of these neighbors um, in the best way. Uh, he's a very cantankerous man. He is described by many as bitter. I just wanted to give you um, a couple of brief. So this one is, this is kind of uh, a one line description of him. Ove is the sort of man who checks the status of all things by giving them a good kick. Um, this is what he thinks of joggers. Uh, not that Ove is provoked by jogging, not at all. Ove couldn't give a damn about people jogging. What he can't understand is why they have to make such a big thing of it. With those smug smiles on their faces as, as if they were out there curing pulmonary emphysema. Either they walk fast or they run slowly. That's what joggers do. I, I always thought that was like a funny observation. Um, so, um, so as I mentioned, he has these really great neighbors that move in. Um, Patrick and Parvena, she's Iranian. Um, she happens to be pregnant and Patrick is super tall and lanky. And the way they first meet is Patrick is, uh, and so one of the, the major themes of the novel is this area that they live in. Um, Ove keeps, he does a daily walk around the neighborhood just to make sure everything is as it's supposed to be. And there are certain rules to this neighborhood. For example, cars have to stay in the car park area. They're not allowed to enter into the housing area. Um, and so when we first meet these neighbors, he, they are trying to move in and they back over Obey's mailbox. So this is a, a little bit of that. What the hell are you doing? Obey roars at the woman. Yes, that's what I'm asking myself, she roars back. Obey, Obey is momentarily thrown off balance. He glares at her. She glares back. You can't drive a car here. Can't you read? The little foreign woman steps towards him and only then does Obey notice that she's either very pregnant or suffering from what Obe would characterize as selective obesity. I'm not driving the car, am I? Obe stares silently at her for a few seconds. Then he turns to her husband, who's just managed to extract himself from the Japanese car and is approaching them with two hands thrown expressively in the air and an apologetic smile plastered across his face. He's wearing a knitted cardigan and his posture seems to indicate a very obvious, obvious calcium deficiency. He must be close to six feet, six and a half feet tall. 
Ove feels an instinctive skepticism towards all people taller than six feet. The blood can't quite make it all the way up to their brain. And who might you be, Ove inquires. I'm the driver, says the lanky one expansively. Oh, really? Doesn't look like it, rages the pregnant woman, who is probably a foot and a half shorter than him. She tries to slap his, slap his arm with both hands. And who is this, Ove asks, staring at her. This is my wife, he smiles. Don't be so sure it'll stay that way, she snaps, her pregnant be belly bouncing up and down. So, I mean, this gives you a little bit of a, a glimpse into um, his character. Um, here's one of my favorite put downs in the novel from him. Uh, one of his biggest pet peeves, Ove is very, he's a very orderly man. Um, he believes in a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. And in general, you should be able to do things on your own. He also is a particular fa fan of the car make Saab. And he pretty much judges you by your car make. If you drive a BMW, you're an idiot. If you drive a Toyota, you're pretty much an idiot. If you drive a Hyundai, there's no help for you. Um, but so if you can't do something, he really judges you critically. So I thought this was hysterical. Holy Christ, a lower arm amputee with cataracts could have backed this trailer more accurately than you, Obey mutters as he gets into the car. I mean, it's just from the get go, these people need help. And so he ends up helping them and how it changes his life is, is really, it was really the story. There's the type of person who would enjoy this novel is somebody who likes realism, comedy, drama, uh, romance, because there is a really lovely love story in this story. I mean, it, there's, there's multiple burgeoning relationships, but there is a beautiful romance at the heart of the story. It's a personal development story. It's a friendship story. And, you know, obviously a huge central character who is super cantankerous. Um, but the thing that the no novel keeps driving at is that even though he has this rough exterior, he is, he's just a man of principles. And when you start really understanding him more, more and more, you realize he has the biggest heart. So here he, um, there is a cat in the neighborhood that his wife loves cats so he knows if he doesn't look after this cat, he's going to be in trouble with her. So um, this is another neighbor he doesn't like. You'll get the picture. That disgusting thing scratched Prince, she manages to say, her eyes wild with fury. Ove peers down at Mutt. It growls at him. Then he looks at the cat, sitting humiliated and bleeding, but with its head defiantly raised outside his house. It's bleeding, so it seems to have ended in a draw, says Ove. Like hell, I'll kill that piece of shit. No, you won't, says Ove coldly. His insane neighbor begins to look threatening. It's probably full of disgusting diseases and rabies and all sorts of things. Ove looks at the cat, looks at the weed, which is the neighbor, nods, and so are you, most likely, but we don't throw stones at you because of it. I mean, he is just like, he just says the most terrible things, but he's, he's defending a cat that this woman is trying to kill because her dog doesn't like it, which who, he even knows like, and then also, so the new neighbors, Parvana and Patrick have two little girls. And so, um, there's a, a scenario where he has to watch the children and he says, Right. What about you? What do you mean? What do you mean me? She counters with indignation. Do you need food or do you have to go for a wee or anything like that? The child looks at him as if he has just offered her a beer and cigarette. I am almost eight. I can go to the bathroom myself. Ove throws out his arms abruptly. Sure, sure. So bloody sorry for asking. Mm, she snorts. You swore, yells the three-year-old as she turns up again, running to and fro between Ove's trouser legs. He skeptically peruses this gram grammatically challenged little natural disaster. She looks up and her whole face smiles at him. So, you know, he's just doing his best. I mean, <laughs> I just love that. He's, he's not great with children, but children love him. And then one last thing I wanted to read, um, because this is, 
OJ from Sonia, his wife's perspective. But to Sonia, OJ was never dour and awkward and sharp-edged. To her, he was a slightly, slightly disheveled pink flowers at their first dinner. He was his father's slightly too tight fitting brown suit across his broad, sad shoulders. He believed so strongly in things, justice and fair play and hard work and a world where right just had to be right. Not so one could get a medal or a diploma or slap on the back for it, but just because that was how it was supposed to be. Not many men of his kind were made anymore, Sonia had understood, so she was holding on to this one. Maybe he didn't write her poems or serenade her with songs or come home with expensive gifts, but no other boy had gone the wrong way on the train for hours every day just because <laughs> just because he liked sitting next to her while she spoke. I just think that's the sweetest thing. <laughs> um, like this, there's like the greatest love story in this novel and it's, it's really interesting and I, I'm like, you have to read it to understand why that's so moving to me because he's just such a difficult character and that somebody can see through that and and as you come to understand him you'll come to love him too um and then one other thing I wanted to mention is his relationship with his um two other neighbors that have lived there as long as he and Sonia have they have a neighbor uh, to, uh Anita and Rune I don't know if I'm saying that name right his name is spelled R-U-N-E it probably is Rune I don't know but in my mind I was reading Rune Rune um, they started out, um, the guys, uh, Sonia and Anita were fast friends. And so Ove and Rune started out, but at some point and, and Ove was okay with it because, you know, he had the Saab of course, and Rune had a Volvo, but he could handle the Volvo when their friendship really was destroyed. Rune came home with a BMW. Um, but a lot of the problems between them were things going on in the council as for, for their uh, neighborhood environment. And it's, it's pretty hysterical. So there's a lot of humor and it's, it's just such a sweet story and so moving as you can. I, I know that that may seem like an overreaction just because of that, but like, he's such an earnest character and he has such a big heart. And like, I, I kind of fell in love with Obey a little bit. I mean, that's, that's it. Like he is such an earnest person. He's an honest person and he would give his heart for the person that he loves. And I just think there's probably no more redeeming quality. So highly recommend the book. It's a 10 out of 10. There's, there's no missteps in this novel. There's nothing, um, out of line. Everything is there's there's parts that like surprise me with how right they felt about the book so I really think that you know Bachman did just wrote a, an amazing book I've read some of his other novels and he is a very talented writer but this one is my particular favorite of his so I actually have a few more of his that I'd like to read so maybe I'll get to those one of these days but that's it definitely read A Man Called Ove be prepared for some waterworks because that's that's like the very least of like my, I mean, I, I cried several times throughout this novel. So um, it's, there's definitely some moving moments, but I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you let me know if you enjoy the book. And I hope I see you again next week when I do another book review. Thank you for your time. Take care.